As app developers, we constantly have to meet the demands of an ever-growing market and evolving user choices. Almost every app that's out there has some sort of authentication mechanism built into it, and it is expected out of the developers to be familiar with most of them as it makes a great impact on the user experience. Hello and welcome everyone to a new series of tutorials where I will be demonstrating the simplest implementation of Firebase authentication using various auth providers. When it comes to Firebase, there are a lot of authentication providers to choose from. It all boils down to the type of the app that you're building. Sometimes you can combine multiple auth providers and link them together using Firebase and just like that, your users can now sign in by using any one of those providers, thus resulting in an even smoother auth experience. In this series, we will go over most and if possible all the authentication providers that Firebase supports. So which auth provider are we going to explore in this video? Well, none, because we need a base. Just like a cake or a building needs a strong foundation, a software project also demands a very strong foundation for it to remain maintainable over years to come. Because just like a cake or a building, a weaker foundation can sometimes result in an ugly disintegration of your project. Alright, so on that bright note, let's get started. Even though in this video, I'm not going to go over any of the auth providers, I would still urge you to watch this video completely, as this might still be the most important video of this series. Because we are going to be setting up the state management and the project structure along with exception handling. So I've created a new Flutter project. My Flutter version is 2.5.3. Now I know that there's a latest version out there, but I'm still on one of the previous versions. Now, let's go into pubspec.yaml and add a couple of dependencies. First, I'm going to get one context. It's a library that helps you access the app context from anywhere, anytime. So you don't always have to pass it around. And you can show snack bars and dialogues without the help of context. I'll also add provider for state management. Inside the lib folder, create a couple of folders, namely data, enums, screens, utils, and widgets. Open main.dart. Let's start from scratch by importing the material module, then create main and call run app. Then we'll create material app widget. Then in the builder, we'll provide one context.builder. Material app uses the builder parameter for inserting widgets above the navigator, like a dialog box or a snack bar. And in this scenario, we are handling the control over the context to one context. We are also required to provide a navigator key. Inside the utils folder, create a file called utils.dart. All the methods inside this class will be static. I'll start with a function that can help us navigate. It'll take the destination screen, then we'll use one context.push, just like navigator.push, to navigate to a new screen. But this time we are pushing to a new screen without the help of an explicitly provided context. Let's also create a private static function called show snack bar. Now there could be different type of snack bars. So let's create an enum inside the enums folder to differentiate between them. We'll have snack bars of type success, error, and warning. The show snack bar method will take a message and a snack bar type. We'll use a switch statement to determine the snack bar color and use one context.show snack bar to display the snack bar and pass it the necessary properties. I will create three public methods that the outside world can use to show the type of snack bar it wants without having to provide a snack bar type every time. It's more intuitive that way. Now I'll navigate inside the widgets folder to create an action button. It's going to be a stateless widget that takes in a text, an on pressed, and an is busy parameter, which is true when the UI is in processing state and an is enabled flag. I'll return a gesture detector that triggers the on pressed callback when the UI is not busy, and it takes a container of max width. We'll provide some padding and color, along with a border radius of 8 units. I will also set the alignment to alignment.center. For child, if the button is busy, we'll show a white circular progress indicator. Or else, we'll show the provided text, also white in color. And text alignment center. Now let's take care of exception handling. Inside the utils file, I'll create a custom exception.dart file, which will implement the exception class. Custom exception can have a message and a code assigned to it. Not every error message has to have a code, so it can be null. Therefore, we'll add a question mark to explicitly allow null values. Let's create a constructor for custom exception where message is a mandatory parameter and code is an optional parameter. 
Let's also create a toString function and use the toString inside the constructor to print the error in the console as soon as the error is thrown. After this, we'll create a validators.dart file inside the utils folder, which will contain various form validators. For now, we'll simply create a validators class and leave it empty. We'll keep on adding more and more validators as per our requirement in the future. Let's head over to the data folder and create models directory. Instead of which, I will create the first model file called authProviderModel.dart. On the entry screen, we will loop over a bunch of available providers and display them. An auth provider model will have a name, image, and landing screen. Let's generate a constructor for this class as well. Name and image are pretty self-explanatory, but the landing screen property will represent the screen where the respective provider's UI will be defined. Next, I'll simply create an empty list of available providers. Let me briefly go over creating a Firebase project and registering the Flutter app to Firebase. Go to Firebase console, click on Add Project to create a new project. Specify a name and follow the steps after it. I've already created the Auth Provider Demo project, so I'll just continue with that. After you're done setting up your own Firebase project, you should land on a screen that looks something like this. Now, in order to connect the Flutter app to Firebase, you need to click on the Add App option. Select a platform. In my case, it'll be Android. Now the first field asks for an Android package name, which you can get from androidmanifest.xml. You can see that I'm not able to create an app with this package name as there's already an app associated to the package name within this Firebase project. Next, you need to specify an app nickname. Let's just name it Auth Provider Demo. The third field is an optional field where you are expected to specify an SHA-1 certificate. We can leave it empty for now, but we will have to provide an SHA-1 certificate while working with Google Authentication. Next, click on Register App and download the googleservices.json file. You need to place this file inside the app directory of the Android module. The third step is to add the Firebase SDK to your Android module and you can simply follow the steps provided here. First, you can just copy this class path and add it to the build.gradle file present inside the Android directory. Next, you need to come inside of the build.gradle file present inside of the app directory and add these lines of code wherever they are specified. Now, you can simply run the app using Flutter Run and the app will be connected to Firebase. It's time for us to start working on the provider selection screen, using which we will select the provider to authenticate with. But before that, we need some data to display within that screen. So you might remember the auth provider model we created. Let's head back to the provider model.dart file. Here we initialized an empty list of available providers. It's time to populate that list. First, I'll create an auth provider model called email provider for name, I'll write email slash password. Landing screen will be a simple container and then I'll pass an image. Next, we'll add the email provider to the list of available providers. Let's head over to the screens folder and create a provider selection screen. This will be a stateless widget and it will return a scaffold, then container. I'll set the width of the container to double dot infinity to allow it to take all the available horizontal space, then provide some margin and padding. I'll pass a column as a child to this container. Set the cross-axis alignment to cross-axis alignment dot start. For children, let's pass in a text widget which will say select provider and it can simply inherit a text style. Next, I'll define a size box of height 10. Then I'll create a wrap widget and for the children of this widget, we'll simply map over the list of available providers. The E parameter represents the current auth provider model item in the loop. We need to map every item into a provider item and finally convert the result returned by this operation to a list. Using this statement, we have converted a list of auth provider models into a list of widgets suitable for the children parameter of the wrap widget. Let's create provider item function. It will return a widget and in the parameter, it will take an auth provider model. We'll start by returning a gesture detector and on tap, we'll call utils.navigate to provider model dot landing. Let's pass a container to the gesture detector, decorate it with a border radius of 10 units and border of 0.5 width. Let's also make it colorful and give it some padding. Inside the container, 
we'll pass a column and the first child of this column is going to be an image.network widget which will take provider model dot image to display the image of the auth provider that we are looping over. I'll give it some height and width and a fit of type cover to allow the image to expand as much as it wants within the provided constraints. Secondly, I'll create a text widget, pass it provider.name and we don't even need to style it. Alright, now that the provider selection screen has been defined, we can pass it to the home parameter of the material app widget. Now I don't want to keep things too boring for you by just showing you the code editor. So here's the output of what we have been doing so far. It's time for us to put together some basic state management for our app. I'll go into the data folder and create state directory which will have auth data dot dart. Now I'll create a class called auth data which extends change notifier exported by material dot dart library. For now I'll simply create a private boolean called is busy which represents the state of the UI at any given moment. I will also define a getter to access this private property. You don't always need to follow this step by step. You could have just created a non-private is busy variable and it would be absolutely fine. Although these getters help when you have tons of variables that are not required to be used by the UI but are useful to the internal logic of the class. That way you expose limited properties which not only reduces an accidental modification but also ensures useful auto recommendation from the IDE. Now we'll create two functions responsible for changing the value of this property, namely setBusy and setFree, which will do exactly what they named and notify the listeners. Let's quickly go over to the main.dart file, wrap material app within a widget and call that widget multi provider. This widget comes from the provider package and it takes a child and a list of providers. Since auth data extends change notifier, Therefore, we will create a change notifier provider from auth data and pass it to the list. You might wonder, what is this multi-provider widget responsible for? Well, what is a provider widget? It is simply an inherited widget and like all the other Flutter widgets, provider widget also lives in a widget tree. A provider widget is extremely useful in providing its utilizers with the required values and efficiently maintaining state. Multi-provider simply merges all those providers into a single linear widget tree. Now that we are done with all the basics, it's time for us to start working on the very first auth provider, which will be email and password authentication in Firebase. And that's where we will pick up from in the next video. I have linked the project repository in the description so you can go over the code yourself. Each branch will represent the progress made in a video and the master branch will contain all of the code. I hope you liked this video and learned something new. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. I would love to hear your feedbacks on the pacing of this video, whether it was comfortable for you to catch all that or was it too fast. Any feedback is usually helpful in improving the quality of the next video. I have been away from YouTube for more than a year now, and a lot of my previous videos have gone obsolete. But that's good, as it creates opportunities for better approaches and projects in the future. So on that note, I'll cue the goodbye music and hope to see you guys again very very soon.